This episode of What the Tech is brought to you by Braintree Payments. Mobile app development can be complex, but integrating your payments no longer has to be. With Braintree, your business can accept nearly every type of payment from any device with just one integration. Learn more at braintreepayments.com slash whatthetech. And by Casper, an online retailer of premium mattresses for a fraction of the price, because everyone deserves a great night's sleep. Get $50 off any mattress purchase by visiting casper.com slash Andrew and enter promo code Andrew at checkout. Everybody, welcome to What the Tech. I'm Andrew here, and of course, I'm joined by the one, the only, Mr. Paul Therod. How you doing, Paul? Pretty good. Pretty there good. I have not seen you at all this week. <laughs> Weird. Yeah. I uh, for people who don't know, I spent the uh, I spent Monday at Paul's house. Yep. We had fun. We had a slumber party. Mm-hmm. We drank Pinot. No, we what did we drink together? We drank we had rose. We had rose. We had uh, Pinot Noir rose. It was a lot of fun. We had fun. We went out and we ate. I've never experienced anything like that in my life. Uh, there should be <laughs> yeah, a podcast around. You got the Paul around... Sushi experience. Oh, my God. That is such an experience. Maybe we'll say that for a post show because uh, <laughs> I was stunned. My jaw had dropped to the ground when I saw how you order food. Uh, By how you order food, I mean you don't and they just bring it out to you. Yep. It was amazing to me. In, in, sushi, in sushi circles, I am what they call in Las Vegas a whale. <laughs> guys we have a lot to talk about today and uh, a couple of things i wanted to get paul's opinion on there's a lot of controversy around the samsung note 7 uh sure. samsung has stopped production on this phone so i want to talk to him about that and a number of other things but before we do that i want to take a moment and talk about our sponsor and that's braintree if you're looking to set up payments for your business braintree gives you and your app or your website, a payment solution that you could accept just about every type of payment with one simple integration. Doesn't matter if it's Apple Pay, Bitcoin, PayPal, uh, Android Pay. You know, every week there's a new type of payment method coming out. And it has to be very difficult if your business relies on taking these different payment methods. People want to try it out. People want to use it. And you don't want to turn away business. Maybe you're working on the next Stuber. Maybe it's the next Airbnb. Maybe the next GitHub. These are services that are all using Braintree. And the reason why they're using Braintree is because they make everything so easy. It's simple, it's secure, and it's code that you can integrate quickly. To learn more about Braintree, go to braintreepayments.com slash TNW. There's so much on this website um, that they offer you guys. It's, it's, it's a total full stack payment solution. So it supports all the different payment methods. Also, it supports a type of, all bunch of different types of languages. So it makes it easy no matter what service you're using. Braintreepayments.com slash what the tech. That's braintreepayments.com slash what the tech. I think I said TNW before. That's the wrong show. Uh Sunka's gonna edit that out. Braintreepayments.com slash what the tech. And uh get started right there. I want to thank Braintree for supporting the show. So, Paul, let's talk about this issue with the note seven. Um, uh, I was reading today that there's a oh, lot is of Is there an issue? I I'm not Yeah, they're they're hot. It, it wasn't um, it wasn't really reported on, I guess. I hadn't heard much. No, nothing was reported on this. So apparently they've stopped production on this thing. Yeah. Indefinitely. So this is done, right? They're not, uh, For now, for the time being, they're not going to produce any more I of these. I think they're done, period. Done, period. Yeah. Uh, um, the I mean, expected, how do you bring back a brand like this? I don't think you can. The expected loss it's is like about $2.6 billion. of smartphones. You know? At least the Pinto lasted a little bit longer. Have you ever seen the movie... Um, Oh God, I just forgot the name of it. There's a spy movie that's like a, like a farce kind of thing with, uh, uh geez, I'm losing my mind. Val Kilmer's in it. So, Top Secret, I think it's. Called. No, I haven't seen it. So there's a great scene where a, um, uh, Ford Pinto goes goes careening off into the woods, goes across a field. It's, you know, everyone's afraid it's going to explode, and then it slowly creeps up onto a tree, and it just tick, and then you know it blows. It up. just blows right up. That's the that's the note set. Yeah, right well, this is a. I, this is probably one of the biggest recalls for a manufacturer, like a like a phone, right? I would imagine right, this is right. probably one of the largest ones because of 
the notoriety the company has and the phone has. This was supposed to be this unbelievable phone that people were dying to get. I know people waited to get this thing for a while. They were really excited yeah, to get this. It's very highly regarded. I mean, aside from the aside from it catching on fire, fire. yeah. <laughs> you know, if, if we pretend that didn't happen, uh, yeah, it was their new flagship. It was a big deal. Yeah, and you have to ship this thing in a fireproof box. I know. Can you imagine? I mean, imagine a, a, a UPS plane or something spontaneously explodes because a bunch of these things are in the back. And all of them just go off? <laughs> well, yeah, it's like a chain reaction yeah. or something. Like, I don't know how. I mean, the science of that is probably not <laughs> correct. But, yeah. I mean, uh, months ago, uh, well, a month ago, month and a half ago, I started writing about this. And, and I'm, I was looking ahead to my own work-related travel. And I, what I was saying at the time was there had better not be some goon that brings one of these plane, one of these phones on my plane. You know, you can imagine how stupid people are and how they w will, you know, this will never happen to me. I mean, you know, it's happened or whatever. And, you know, they take down an entire plane of people because they're just ignorant, you know. And I think in the early days of this event, people weren't necessarily sure if it was as serious as, you know, maybe I was saying it was. It's serious. <laughs> like, yeah, so this, is, this impacts all of them. Oh, this is humongous. And this, this, this actually goes, this goes beyond just this phone because, you know, from what I understand, right, the science mm -hmm. behind this is that they essentially took a 3,000 milliamp battery and right. stretched it a little to give it, you know, it's, five, it's 3,500 milliamps. So they've added more cells. I, I don't understand all this 100%. So I'm just... Going to try I don't, my yeah, I don't here. think it's been 100% confirmed. But this is what the report is. And this that was is the theory. Yeah, this yeah. is the current theory. And it was initially they said it was the fast charging feature of this. And now they're saying, well, it's also the fact that they took a 3,000 milliamp battery and it's so super thin, this thing. They've mm. pushed it. It was just the, the pressure on it caused some kind of chemical reaction in the yeah. battery. Yeah. And it, now the By thing way, is that should make anyone it. nervous. You know? Oh, my God. People yeah. that put phones in their back pockets and sit on them or. People that crush a phone into a bag and throw it on a plane or something. But can you imagine? You know, I was thinking this, right? Because I came up to visit you on Monday, and mm -hmm. I put my laptop in the bag. And I was walking. Uh, when I was walking back, I realized that I didn't turn the laptop off, and it was still on because I could feel heat coming from this thing. Even though it was in sleep mode, it was still a little warm. And I freaked out immediately. I took the thing out, and I you know, turned it off, and I made sure that this thing was off. But this is scary to think that, yeah. they, you know, these phones are things that we all have in our hands, in our pockets all day long. Yep. Every yeah. day. Yeah. They're like little nuclear reactors. It's, it's a really scary notion. And, and it really is. And the more we expand on trying to push the battery to its limits and getting more performance out of these things, the more we are going to start to experience problems like this. Samsung at this moment, um, the report is that they really can't. Uh, they can't replicate this problem. And that's the scariest part. I, sure. I believe 23 phones in the U.S. have, have experienced this, or is it worldwide? I, it was a 23 number. I can't remember. 23 right is now. probably U.S. I think I, the last number I saw was 19 in the U.S. I okay, think. So, so it's so probably 23 uh, confirmed. Yeah. And the engineers at Samsung, they have over 100, 100 people working on this. They cannot replicate this exact problem. And that's the scariest part of it, because if they can't replicate it, they can't solve it. I, you know, they had come out and said that it was the battery, you know, one type of battery originally. They yeah. had no idea what they were talking about. I mean, I, th this raises such incredible issues of trust that I'm not sure that this brand ever recovers from this. You know, I, I don't, I, although I guess uh, there are uh, examples of, Brands that suffered this kind of problem, like Firestone had problems with tires, I think, literally exploding, right, or, or you know, popping off of wheels or whatever. Um, uh, what was the um, Tylenol, right, had the scare? Had the scare, yeah. Where people had, were poisoning Tylenol, and that re resulted in childproof uh, containers, uh, yeah. which we all suffer from today. And I guess those things have, re you know, have recovered. But as I said uh, to my wife, who had reminded me of the, the Tylenol example, um, you can't put this thing in a childproof container. That's, no, you cannot. <laughs> you don't no. got to protect anyone. I mean, uh, the packages you were talking about that people have to return these things include fireproof gloves. Fireproof gloves, know? yeah. 
and, and it's crazy. Yeah. So there's, I don't know that there's ever been anything like this. No, I don't think so either, especially for technology. You know, these things are all, I mean, if you really think about it, like we were talking about that, um, you know, I have this laptop here, which uh, Paul played around with for a little bit. It's, yeah. it's yeah. a, uh, it's an unknown Chinese brand. Uh, I'm reviewing this thing. And something that I really don't like about it is the power cord. Right. Because it looks really cheap, and that's something that I fear. I had a big problem, and these are things that we really don't think about when we're using technology. I had a huge problem with a third-party Mac uh, power cord. Yep, yep. It caught on fire. Right. I had it for about three weeks. Luckily, I was home. All of a sudden, I I hear it buzzing. It's like it was made out of... um like cloth or thread like those uh like wiring insulation used to yeah. be in the 1930s yeah or yeah, yeah 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 it, the thing starts buzzing i look back it's smoking the brick that that brick that that mac you know the the charging yeah. thing has it starts smoking it's crazy so this is a it, obviously you know things like that are going to happen but when you have a major manufacturer like samsung shipping out millions of these phones and now they yep. have to stop manufacturing. They have to halt production. They right now, and you have to ship this thing back to them. So I'm tr- I'm curious. <laughs> I mean, how how would you like to be the guy working at the factory where these things arrive, right? And and wh- how I, are these things ever going to be safe? I wonder. I mean, it's like I, it's like I, this guy. I, what does the, it mean? Like, oh, Phil, where, I got the hazmat you? suit. Hang on. No, the hazmat suit. I mean, the whole place is going to go up. I mean, where where on earth is safe enough? to store dispose of or store these things right i mean yeah. where do you get to take it like uh the fukuyama reactor or something <laughs> like where, right in. where yeah exactly like where where is okay you know how you, you know? do it you know how you you know how you do this you get a helicopter you put them all in the crate and they just dump it in a volcano yeah and just yep. that's as it. a it's, sacrifice to the angry god as a sacrifice to the angry god uh this is what this is how we're disposing of these phones but I wonder what the consequences are going to be now for this. Are they going to, because now the latest thing is the S7 people, S7 owners are freaking out and running to the store and saying, Hey, do I need to send this back? Right. Cause it's close enough, right? It's the galaxy S7. This is the note seven. You, some people don't know. And is so this, there a, is there a version of the galaxy S7 that is like a plus size version? Like, is there a, is there like a phablet version of it? No, no, not that I know of. Yeah. So there's no real direct replacement. There's no direct Samsung, replacement for right? this. No, there's no direct yeah. replacement. They're kind of screwed. Do they bring back the S6 now? Is the top? Is the, you know? The, well, they never had an S6. Remember, they no, went from. I'm sorry. Uh, from, I'm sorry. The Note. Uh, Note they never had a Note 6, right? They went from Note 5 to 7. I don't remember that. Which yeah, I guess I think we right. can all agree was their first problem. Um, I'm looking on their site now to see. I mean, you can still buy a a Note 5. Um, I am this company. <laughs> you, oh no, it's gone now. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, in fact, if you go and look at their note page, all they have is Note Five now. Which, note by five. the way, they should be fire selling. Pardon the pun. Yeah. Um, they should be giving like two hundred dollars off on these things just to get people to go with a year old phone. Yeah. Um. It's astonishing. Let me see here. I'm trying to find out. So, two point six billion dollar loss. From this mm-hmm. problem, does this yep. impact uh, development for future phones? How would this impact them? You know, that's not obviously Samsung is making crazy amount of money, but well, <laughs> it's still a problem. It's I mean, still a huge problem. I'm trying to, I, I can't believe they don't have any other big phone. These guys are, these guys are toast. <laughs> Again, pardon the pun. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Let's see what happens. I'm curious. I'm curious how they handle this. I'm curious, you know, Verizon. Now they're issuing a hundred dollar rebate on top of this. Yeah. Sure. Uh, well, which by the should. way, lawsuits are on the way. Oh my gosh! Right. Of course they are. Oh my gosh! Absolutely, absolutely. Paul, you got a Roku Premiere Plus. Yeah. I want to talk to you about this. Uh, yeah. Very, very interested in this, and I, I wanted to ask you more about the TV that you have because I was. Blown away by the TV that you have in your living room. Yeah. It was unbelievable. But before we do yeah. that, let's take a moment and talk about our sponsors. And that's Casper. I, sp- I slept on a Casper mattress at Paul's house. That's true. That's I did. True. And it yeah. was perfect. 
Uh, one of the only times I've got to someone's house, and I had no issues sleeping because it is just like my Casper mattress. It was absolutely comfortable. Uh, when I tell you it is the best night's sleep that you will get, I genuinely believe it, and I'm telling you, based on my own personal experience, these mattresses are amazing, and they have a great offer. Uh, you know, Casper is one of the best online retailers for premium mattresses, and it's a fraction of the price that you're going to pay if you go to one of these, you know, mattress stores to get something that's probably not as good as this one. You get $50 off any mattress purchase by visiting casper.com slash Andrew and entering the promo code Andrew at checkout. Uh, they are unbelievable. We've been talking about them for a while, and here's a great offer for you guys. I am, I don't know what this is here. Uh, here here's a great offer for you guys. Uh, if you purchase your Casper mattress and you're not too sure about it, or, you, you know, a lot of times people buy mattresses and they end up hating it like me. I had bought a very expensive mattress, hated every day of it, and I couldn't return it because you don't realize that you dislike this thing or it's not for you for until a couple days. One night is not going to change anything. Casper offers free delivery and painless return within a 100-day period. That's right. It's 100 days. You get to sleep on this thing. And if you don't like it, you send it right back to them. And every Casper mattress is made in the USA. These guys are great. Great pricing. Great company. And great service. Casper.com slash Andrew. Get $50 off your mattress purchase when you put in the promo code Andrew at checkout. I want to thank Casper for supporting the show. Uh, Paul, let's talk about this Roku. Yep. Uh, you are a big Roku fan. I know that. And That's true. I'm personally, I'm a fan of the Fire TV. Yep. And I had a Roku originally, and I kind of left it because I the interface started looking kind of dated. The services started kind of looking dated. The apps were a little sure. wonky. So I went over to the Fire TV. I also have an Apple TV, which I absolutely hate for a number of reasons, but yep. the remote being the main. But tell me about your experience with the, uh, the Premiere Plus. Yeah. So... Uh I mean, this is probably the first time I haven't had an overwhelmingly positive reaction to a Roku device. And it's not because it's not any good. I, I, please don't misread that. It's just that with this generation of devices, they've really kind of packed the, the lineup with additional models. And so you really have to pay attention with each one to determine which one you want to get. And I, I, I really sort of disagree with that. I've always, it's sort of like when Microsoft with Windows... And then later with Office, added all those extra SKU versions. Remember, they used to have like Home Basic, Home Premium, yeah. Professional, Ultimate. You know, it was like it's just it's just too much confusion. And so you really have to pay attention to the spec sheet to see what you're getting. And so when I looked at the new lineup, and I'm kind of doing this off the top of my head, but there's a there's a, a Roku Premiere, and they 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 this year they have redone their entire lineup. So earlier in the year, they redid the stick, the streaming stick. Yeah. And then just about a month ago, they announced the new devices. And so, you know, Roku devices have typically looked like a hockey puck or whatever. Yeah. Um, they're a little different. They, they, they look basically the same. So they're a little squatter looking. Do you want me to go through this? Through what? Through the list? Of no, 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 no. Yeah. Let's, no, I can, I, can do, yeah. I can do this off the top. Okay. I have the important stuff. Okay. So um, when you look at the high end of the lineup, which is what I'm looking at because I have a, a TV that is 4K UHD. Uh, and has HDR capabilities. And so for me, like that's the minimum. This is what I'm looking at. Yeah. Last year, the only high-end device they had was something called the Roku 4. It did 4K, 60 frames a second. But HDR was not a feature uh, for that device because HDR wasn't really wasn't a thing a really last year. Thing. Yeah, so this year HDR has become a thing. And so for this year, if if you want the equivalent, well, see, it really isn't the equivalent. But as far as display quality equivalent of the Roku 4, there's something called the Roku Premiere. Yeah. And it does 4K. It does, you know, UHD resolution, 60 frames a second. It's $80. And so it's a $20. Actually, it's more like a $40 savings over what the Roku 4 probably was a year ago. If you want HDR, you have to move up to the Roku Premiere Plus, Plus. which is what I bought. It's $100. And uh, the new high-end offering they have is called the Roku Ultra, Ultra I think, or Premiere Ultra. And uh, it's $130. And I looked at the kind of specs on that, and it was a bunch of stuff I didn't really need, like Dolby uh, Digital, digital Out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, this stuff I didn't really care about. Yeah, it gives you optical out, and it has a remote finder, and that's it. Yeah, and, well, and well, it's a little more nuanced than that. So for, um, I, uh, uh, you have to kind of look at the pictures I have on the site to kind of fully understand this. But when you compare the old remote versus the new, there's some good and there's some bad. So like the new remote is kind of a matte finish instead of glossy, so it doesn't pick up fingerprints. That's good. It doesn't have the search button on it. So you mm. actually have to get the highest end version to do voice search, oh, that's... which is what that is, okay. like you see on the Amazon Fire TV. 
Um, the device itself is much smaller than the old version. I don't think that matters, right? You stick this thing in a shelf, who cares? Yeah. Um, but there's some stuff missing. Like you said, digital audio out. There's no USB port. So what that means is you can't come up with a USB stick or a hard drive and have content that you have stored there and play it back mm -hmm. locally. You can still go over the network and hit a network share. I do keep content on a network share. That's fine. But sometimes, you know, you just download a video, you throw it on a stick, you plug it in, it just works. It's kind of a nice thing. It's something that's not available on the Premiere Plus. So this is kind of an example of, um, you know, trying to do the right thing and saving money and trying to think through what features do I really need. But then you kind of take it out of the box and you're like, oh, that's weird. It doesn't have couple of features it there. It seems like they like tried they to really... offer something for everybody, and that, that sometimes is not the right approach. You have, I'm looking here, you got one, no. two, you got the Express, the Ex Express Plus, the Stick, the mm -hmm. Premier to Premier Plus, and the Ultra. It's too much. It, it's, and they're varying from 29 bucks to, the price vary, ranges from 29 to 129 Yeah, it's it is too a much. Yeah, uh, that so is too much. I, I, I guess, uh, first of all, I'll say this. I, the only reason I bought this uh well, is because I'm an idiot, and I wanted HDR, and HDR is not worth 100 additional dollars. Like, that was stupid. I can make this sort of justification that I really sort of bought it because, you know, I write about technology, and this is interesting for me to write about, but that's baloney. I really just bought it because I'm an idiot. If you have a Roku 4, don't buy a new Roku. That's a stupid waste of money. If you're still on one of the older devices, like whatever they're called, Roku 2, 3, whatever they were back in the day, you know, maybe I think the older, you know, you could have like 1080p support and, um, well, that's probably the extent of it. You know, if you have a 4K TV, you know, maybe it's time to upgrade. If you don't, don't bother. There's absolutely no reason to upgrade to this thing. Um, but this kind of targets this part of the market, which I'm now suddenly very interested in because I'm in that part of mar the market, the 4K which market. is 4K plus HDR, yeah. right? The Xbox One S supports this. Uh, this new Roku supports this. Uh, that's about it. Yeah. <laughs> I think the PlayStation 4 will support it. There just aren't that many devices that support it. Like Apple TV doesn't even support 4K, let alone HDR. That thing badly needs to be changed. I mean, I, maybe they need an additional model. Which one? The Fire? Uh, the, the Apple TV. The Apple. You um, know, but, but here's the thing. Does Apple have 4K content on iTunes? No, but they, they will. I mean, there's no way that yeah. they're not going to. And so I, I would assume that, that when they... It's crazy. Um, Amazon sells 4k content. It's super expensive. I was just looking at it today when I set up the device. If you go into the Amazon prime store on the device, they actually now have a 4k channel. You can go through. There's yeah. only 20 to 30 titles in there and a, a major Hollywood movie like, uh, Elysium that, uh, Matt Damon movie, which was one of the few semi recent movies I even saw was $30, um, for a digital download. It was like $30. I mean, like I, I, I would never buy a movie like that. Like, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, Google Play will offer it soon. But the Google Play app on Roku doesn't support 4K, at least not today. Um, Amazon supports some, like I said, not much. Netflix supports some. We've been watching Netflix, uh, Netflix 4K series recently. Uh, that stuff's beautiful, obviously. Yeah. I, and I think that's it, about it. There isn't much. Yeah, I'm trying to think on the Amazon stuff. How much 4K? You're right. It's not a lot of 4K content. It really isn't that much. Yeah. And it's a real hit or miss. I mean, it's, you know, it, it, if it's like when people go to Netflix and they think, well, I'm going to watch all the Star Wars movies. I'm going to watch all the Indiana Jones movies. And it's like, it's that it doesn't really work that way. And, and Netflix has some combination of decent semi first run movies and a bunch of crap. Amazon does the same thing. Uh, but at least with Amazon, if, you know, you can rent movies, right? Like you would from iTunes or from Google. Uh, that are first run movies. Um, you just can't do it in 4K. And so it's, it's, we're in kind of a weird area right now where it's just not there yet. I mean, at, at some point, Star Wars and Indiana Jones and Jaws and The Exorcist or whatever, a lot of those movies will probably be made available in 4K. Yeah. And th there'll be another round of rebuying or re renting the same content over and over again because now we want to see it redone. I could picture Hollywood Studios remastering movies not just for 4k off of film but also with hdr uh, post-processing which probably won't be as good as if it were done that way originally i guess but it's still some, you know so like i'm gonna ask movies. you this as someone that has has a 4k tv and you've seen hdr and you've seen it without hdr do you notice a significant difference with hdr is it a 
yeah. you know, I, I my eye is not trained yet for this because I have not really watched too much so, 4K content and I have watched yeah. very little HDR content. Yep. Yeah. So um, uh, if you have a 4K capable Netflix uh, app and a 4K capable screen, you will get a special channel in Netflix that's 4K. And if you scroll through the list, I think they're identified. I think it says 4K UHD or something like that next to the name. And so you scroll through the list, 4K, 4K, 4K. Every once in a while, you'll hit one that says HDR. And the ones that are HDR are both 4K, UHD, and HDR. And I found two today, and I'm, I wish I could remember what they were. Uh, I don't remember, but um, I just flipped through them to find scenes where – and the thing is, you don't have to train your eye. They're, they're, they're just like saturated, awesome – they're beautiful. They're actually, they're a little bit like that movie we watched when you were over. We, when when Andrew was over, I showed him uh, Mad the Max. Mad Max movie on, yeah. which was a Blu-ray UHD, 4K HDR, you know, movie. Um, it, it's, you know, it's, it's the <laughs> it's the vision version of pungent. Yes, <laughs> you know what yes. I mean. Yes, it's, I, I, it's I, so. Yeah, yeah. It, it's very interesting. You know, to me, it. Uh, because I think when when we were watching, you also had the uh, the blur reduction thing turned on. Yep. Um, yep. and we turned it off, and I, we didn't watch it afterwards. But that also adds, it changes the look of it. But it was so, uh, it was startling to me watching it because it doesn't, it no longer looks like a film. Right. Right, and I don't know if that's the positive. I mean, clarity-wise, it's, it's stunning, but I don't know if that's a positive <coughs> or it's a negative, or my eyes have not been trained for 4K. Well, I I bought three discs uh, as an experiment, um, and of them, two of the three, that movie and The Revenant, are are so hyper realistic. Even like the beginning of The Revenant is some people walking through low water with trees around them. And they're they're hunting something, and it is just it's like the reflection of the light on the water, yeah. which is rippling a little bit because people are walking slowly through it. it. It is the most stunningly realistic. You are there moment. The I mean, the only thing missing is that kind of VR immersive thing where it's literally 360 degrees. But it is, it's so beautiful, and so amazing. Um, I I just I mean, I, it makes normal TV or normal movies hard. Yeah. To watch. Well, we went They're back down not... to a regular broadcast. You know, you were putting yeah. on. You put. I think like, you put on oh, a football geez. game, and it looked terrible after watching. You it's know, like, something right. for that long. It, it it's looked like watching a nineteen eighties newscast. Oh my from God. A, Like a tube TV. You know, it's yeah. really, really bad. You know, it's amazing, right? Because they say, "Well, how much better do you want it to get than you know than ten eighty p?" And then you watch something that's four K and with HDR, mm -hmm. you know, like a Blu Ray or something, you and then go you back. go back to a broadcast feed and then you say to yourself what the hell is this yeah. this is terrible this is a this is a problem i mean uh, i think we've talked before there there's a slice of content that was created in my lifetime but and it, it goes from sometime in the 70s through almost the 21st century like through the 90s certainly where they stopped filming tv shows on film and they started using tape and those shows will never look good ever again. No, never. Like they're they're never gonna look good. And so even in the HD era, as we went to 720p and 1080p, if you watched a show like uh, like Magnum PI is one I happen to know for a fact was filmed. It was made on film. It's just it's never it's it's terrible. There, there are examples of TV shows from that those times that were made on film, like terrible TV shows like Charlie's Angels for whatever reason. Uh, excuse was me, was filmed on show. film. <laughs> that thing could be remastered in 4K and it would look beautiful. Yeah, um, it would still be terrible, <laughs> but it would look beautiful. But most of that stuff was all made on film, and it's never going to look good. And now, with 4K, I mean a 4K screen is quadruple the resolution of 1080p, right? Uh, an SD screen. What the like? It's pr basically 640 by 480. Have Not you, even really. Right? Have you watched it's any SD terrible. on your TV? I'm curious. What's that? Have you watched any SD content? No, but my gut feeling is that it doesn't change much. Like it already looks pretty bad on HD. I, I given how HD looks, I'm thinking it's not going to look worse, right? I think it's probably going to look the same. It, I I think it just never gets any better. It's amazing. We're in a very interesting transitionary period when it comes to content and. This yeah. is the thing that the cable companies have feared because 
they are not able to keep up with the technology changes. That's the reality right. of it. You know, we barely, we don't have 1080p content on cable. There's no 1080p, yeah, so, right? Yeah, sure. So we have 1080i sure. and we have 720. And between that and the fact that they are cutting back on bandwidth so they could add more channels, like Fios cannot add any more HD channels. They are maxed out or close to maxed out. Right. You have their backbone cannot support it for whatever reason. So what's going to happen over the next 10 years as we transition more and more people transition to 4K content, you know, 4K televisions, they transition to online content like Hulu and, uh, and Netflix. Mm -hmm. It's going to be very difficult for them to grab and, and convince people to pay a hundred and something dollars for cable. I, I'm paying a hot, over two, almost $200 right now for, yeah. for TV that I don't even watch. I, I suspect in my case, if I if my wife and I were to do the math on this and, and say, look, let's just get rid of everything. We, obviously, we need the high-speed internet connection, and that's going to cost whatever. And then we do something like the PlayStation View plus you know, Netflix plus Hulu or something, or some combination of these things. Uh, you know, what? How does that work out price-wise? I think the truth is, it's going to be the Fios part of the deal that screws us over yeah. because when Fios listens to the story and says, let me get this straight. You want to get rid of your two phone lines. You want to get rid of your um, TV package. But you want to keep the internet connection? Yeah. That's going to be the same price. Yeah. <laughs> like they're going to make yeah, it that's so, what, that's what happened. so pointless to get rid of stuff. Yeah. You know? I, had, um, I was trying to cut back on the premium channels like Showtime and HBO because I yeah. barely watch it, right? And... <laughs> they told me it's like okay, so let's say let's say two hundred dollars. I don't have the exact. Let's say two hundred dollars with everything. That's with that's without cable. Just uh, that's without internet. Just the TV, right? The TV portion. And I'm like, okay, well, I want to cut cut HBO and Showtime. They go, okay, so that's going to be twelve dollars less a month. I'm like, so wait a minute. You give me like fifty channels, like every single HBO, every single Showtime. Stars, makes sense to keep Cinemax, it. and they're like, yeah, it's $12 to cut that. I go, okay, well, what if I want to go down from the ultra to the standard? I go, that's another $12. So all I'm going to cut like 100 channels, and all you're cutting is like 20 bucks. And they're like, yeah, well, this is how the plan works. Right. That's how they get you. That's how they get you. The only we've way gone, to really do this. this I know. The, the only past, way yeah. is to say, F this. I'm canceling yeah. everything. I don't yeah, want exactly. this. And you pay the yeah. extra $20 for the internet. No, but even then, you're never going to save money because they're not going to want to give no one FiOS or Comcast or whoever. They don't want you buying an internet package. You know, <laughs> they're not going to make that. You know what's crazy? It's not like you save fifty percent by dropping everything else. You know. Yeah. Uh, and that's the problem. So it, it, it's we started doing. They this make show. it prohibitive. This is like um, uh, phone companies have gotten in trouble for this, and uh, wireless carriers. It's the I'm not getting the term right, but it's like a, the change cost. Yeah, You know, it's not, you could save a lot of money by going to a different carrier, let's say, but your carrier is going to try to prevent that by making the cost of changing prohibitively expensive. Absolutely. Um, yeah. here's a good, here's a good example. When we started doing the show, mm -hmm. I ended up having to buy a second line from Verizon and it's weird how they did it because we have to tell them we're like, there's two apartments and we're running, you know, <laughs> like we have to say like, the, oh, no, no, it's it, there's an apartment. So they actually run a separate line with a separate ONT, which is in my sure. closet here. Um, they were charging us for a 50 by 50 line. It was 64 bucks. 64 bucks. Not bad because I had yeah. no cable. If I had cable, it would have been. Oh, I'm like, sorry. You're talking about a I'm sorry. Yeah, just yeah, Internet yeah. Uh, okay. because. I can't. I couldn't bundle it with my other package. I can't have two internet lines and get the discount. You got to have only one. And so, then you, okay. I mean, at that price, okay. you could get string three services on top of that and hit but, about one hundred and ten dollars. Yeah, that's not it's bad, not right? That's not terrible. Yeah. Right now, the same service with a contract is now costing me one hundred and twenty-eight dollars a month. They have right. raised the price twice well, that, as that's much. That's why. Two years ago, we dropped FiOS because our price had doubled over time. Just for internet. And then you come back a year later and you save, you know, it's like, how could we possibly be saving between $150 and $200 a month? It's because of that kind of stuff. It, it's 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 such a racket. And I understand someone's going to be like, no, it's business. No, yeah, it's business, but it's a racket. <laughs> oh, no, it's a racket. It's crazy. They, 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 they're intentionally screwing over their customer base. Just The cost so of this stuff is less for them now than it was two years yeah. ago. Yeah. I They're not... 
no one is benefiting from the uh, the passage of time, the like, reduce, reduced cost of components or service, or whatever, except for them. I mean, you know, they're they're charging more. It's like uh, ATM fees. You know, banks save money when you use an ATM machine. Like, and why they are they charging money you three dollars when you use someone else's ATM machine? Because what costs them money is when you go into the bank and have to talk to a human being. Yeah, but they that charge should you cost less. Nope. <laughs> like it, it's just you know because in their you know the way they can justify it is this is a convenience for you and so we can charge more for you that would more to you for that and i i just have i don't know i i can't stand this kind of stuff no me too um guys we have a lot to talk about here actually one more thing i'm lying we have one more thing to talk about here but before i do that i want to give a uh, little shout out to my favorite website in the world and that's the rot.com right here uh you and brad and the entire team there are doing some amazing stuff the new design is out and there's a forum now posted which mm -hmm. i am posting on the forum and you guys do a premium show every day you guys do a couple minutes every day just talking about you know the news for the day uh you have this beautiful set that someone i don't who's that handsome guy that went to your house and fixed it oh that's me oh my electrician yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> jeff cobb yeah he's a good guy yeah he's a very good guy um Guys, if you haven't already, go sign up for the premium package. It is unbelievable. The amount of content that you're getting every day is awesome. Um, there's a bunch of blog posts there. You could sign up, become a premium member for 64 bucks for the year. $64. You become a premium member. You get access to all these awesome things like the premium forum, the First Ring Daily podcast, full access to content on Therat, quarterly um, quarterly health of tech reports that are going to be coming out, the Therat newsletter, and much, much more. You guys are working. Paul, well, seriously, the, the posts that you're make, you're posting are awesome, and you posted something. Uh, it blew my mind, uh, the story that you posted about how Google saved your life. Oh, yeah. Uh, if you guys haven't read it yet and you're a Therat.com subscriber, a premium subscriber, I really, really recommend it because um, I read the article, and then I was talking to Paul about this, and I couldn't believe the story. And this is really Google saved your life. Yeah. If you hadn't Googled something, it, it would have you would have never followed through. Uh, awesome right. stuff. Therot.com, guys, go there, sign up. Sixty four bucks for the year. Uh, this is not a paid sponsorship, by the way. This is not a paid sponsorship. I genuinely am a member. I'm a, I'm a Therot Premium member, and I and I love talking about it. And Paul I like loves that talking. I've become about the new Casper mattress. You are now. Yeah, get it. <laughs> that's that's pretty much been my goal. So <laughs> you have become my Casper mattress. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you a question about this new update. Uh, there's a new build out for Windows 10. Mm -hmm. People are dying to know what can they expect from this. So I'm literally waiting on the end of this podcast to install it, but <laughs> based on what Microsoft says, uh, and this is for fast ring Windows insiders, right? It's not something the public. Yeah. What's see the yet. build number? Do you know, it's, what's the build number? Uh, it is hello fourteen ninety two nine four six, and so last week they think they put out fourteen nine four two, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, the previous build was the first one to include a bunch of new features that are going to be showing up in the next version of Windows ten. So this version, this one is a kind of a smaller update, but there's some big up. There's one big update in here if you have a precision touchpad, which people have Surface devices do. Um, a lot of new configuration capabilities there for multi-finger gestures, taps, yeah. swipes, and so forth. Um, you can really configure that stuff. And basically what you're seeing here is a push to uh, kind of remove the legacy uh, settings, or I guess we call them control panel interfaces from previous versions of Windows. Yeah. Get all that stuff right into the new settings app, and so. So this, thing, I mean, this has been a long time coming, where they're adding more and more into the settings menu rather than a uh, control panel. But I have a question about yeah. this gesturing. Um, precision touchpad experience. So this is, I mean, yeah. this is pretty much every touchpad that has multi gesturing. So well, no. So um, this is actually a limited set of trackpads, unfortunately. So every any touchpad can support multi finger gestures, right? So. The problem is for that stuff to be configured from Windows, you have to have a precision touchpad, okay. and there aren't as many of those. So all of the new Surface devices have them. Um, I'm trying to think what else. I think I think Dell might use it on the XPS 13, but I'm not 100% sure of that. But if you buy like a, most HP devices, they'll offer similar functionality to this, but you have to do it through their own interface. Uh, okay. To get it directly from Windows, you actually have, have to have what is formally called a precision touchpad, which is a special 
uh, spec that you have to meet. So, yeah, so I'm looking some companies just out. don't do it because they have you know arrangements with Synaptics or whatever, and they use that instead. I'm trying to find out what manufacturers are using this. Uh, the Dell XPS 13 has, yeah, you're right. Dell is using it on the XPS 13. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, fun fun thing here. Um, mm -hmm. I, well, not fun for, for Windows-based machines, but interesting. Um, I was talking to my friend Bob yesterday, and mm -hmm. he needs to get a new computer. His laptop is dead. And sure. we were having a couple of drinks, and we're having this discussion about what to buy. And this is something that we always talk about where, the PC market has a branding issue because nobody knows what the Lenovo 9466 version 2 is. You know what I mean? Like, it, this is something that Windows Microsoft, uh, PCs, the OEMs have done for a while. Like, you don't know the difference between all, each Acer. All we know is that everybody has a flagship. We don't know what it is. Right. So we were talking about this, and I asked them, if you were to buy a Mac, what would you buy? He said MacBook Pro. And I was like, what would you buy an HP? He's like, I don't know what to get. I yeah. said, how about Dell? He goes, XPS 13. The XPS 13 seems to be the most known. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because there are, there are so many laptops that are actually much better than that one. But it, almost by virtue of the fact that it is uh, available at retail and it has a really kind of a simple name, uh, it's not too terrible. I think, um, you know, there are a number of HP devices that are actually better than the XPS 13, but... I also think HP has too many brands, you know, kind of like the Roku thing. They have, you know, Envy and Spectre and Omen. And, you know, they. It, it's not always clear which one of those three premium brands is the one that you want, you know. And I think that's something they need to work on. And then, you know, Lenovo has ThinkPad, obviously. But within ThinkPad, they also have all these kind of sub-brands. And they, they're expanding it out, too. If you just look at uh, ThinkPad devices that are X1 something, that used to be one thing, and now there are several of them. Yeah, you know, and it's. Uh, and this is, uh, you know, I understand I, why they do it, but it makes it confusing, and it makes it hard to recommend things to people. I, I mean, it's it's very difficult, and I, it's yeah. just an observation that I had. I know that the Omen is what their gaming laptop, right? Yep. And then the Spectre is the Ultrabook, like super thin one, right? Mm -hmm. And then what else do they have? They have the Envy line, which is, I guess. The normal one? I don't know what the Envy nope, would be. Uh, so the normal one is like Pavilion. <laughs> so Envy and Spectre are both in their own way uh, pr premium brands. Okay. Mm -hmm. Omen is gaming. And then uh, there's the Elite, premium brand right? Is gaming. And then they have the mm -hmm. Elite. Uh, is the Elite its own brand? Yeah. Uh, Envy, Spectre, Elite, Pavilion, and uh, yeah, so Stream. Even I, keep, I keep it straight. <laughs> there's too many of them. They have the stream. Yeah, stream. Stream is a mainstream. And then brand. they have the laptop. They have the HP laptop. Just HP laptop. Yeah. HP so Pro. Part of, okay. So part, I, I can't, I'm not going to sit here and try to explain away yeah. HP. Like I don't, I actually disagree with this, um, what they're doing. But some of, some of it is just uh, retail arrangements. You know, they, they might have certain, uh, like, you know, phones are particular to a certain carrier for whatever arrangement they might have. Um, some of the stuff HP does is only shows up at certain retailers. Like they have, I know they have arrangements with Best Buy, for example. But um, yeah, I feel like they have too many brands. You they know? all I do, mean, and it was just it was just yeah. something that came to mind because uh, you know when you talk to people that are not covering technology uh, for a living, it, it's a very different sure. viewpoint and it's very different purchasing. You know. So just, but that said, I did. You know, again, I'm not trying to defend HP per se, but. If you look at a, a brand like Apple, and if you look just at Macs, and you and you just look at portable Macs, they have MacBooks, they have MacBook Airs, and they have MacBook Pros, and you may assume that there is some sort of a, 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 a an upward slope as you go from brand to brand, but that's not really the case. In fact, the only one of those three that's been upgraded recently is the the MacBook, which began life several years ago as a very low end machine, and today is actually a premium machine that is purposely limited in certain ways because it's kind of like a, you know, a sort of a new kind of computer. Um, regardless of your opinion of Apple and their products, um, these are all premium computers. So Apple actually has three premium brands too. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, no, I agree with you. I mean, I'm just, yeah. you know, I, I'm, I'm just, they don't have the equivalent of a pavilion you know, they just have premium brands. And so, yes, HP may have Elite, Envy, and Spectre, but Apple has MacBook, MacBook Air, and MacBook Pro. So. I brought up HP because they have a, a new laptop. Uh, they have new laptops out. So, yeah. 
and they're slimmer than ever, according to everybody. They're very well. Very so that that machine, the X, the Spectre X three hundred and sixty, is mm -hmm. an awesome computer, and has been for the past year and a half. And now this is the first brand new version in the sense that it's all new external as well as internal. Yeah. I believe it's and the it looks um, the NV13 and the Spectre X360 mm -hmm. are the two new ones yep. from them. All right, Paul. Anything else you want to bring up? We said we're going to do a little quick show today. It'll be a little mm -hmm. shorter. Uh, is there anything coming up? What are you up to? <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I'm you know heading to Vegas at the end of the month. I may be heading to New York at the end of the month. I need to kind of figure that out. Um, I'm hoping to do nothing before then. <laughs> so Wonderful. I guess we'll see. <laughs> well, that's the way to do it. Do nothing. Do a little nothing. Yeah, um, you? Are you... I, I am traveling. Well, I, I travel to you and then yep. I'm going to uh, I'm going to L.A. on Tuesday. So right. I'm thinking we would do what the tech. Um, I guess we would do it from L.A. Okay. I get in. I guess we could do it on Tuesday as soon as I get in. Um, my flight gets in at nine something west, you know, Pacific. Mm -hmm. So I guess we could do that. And I'll we'll do it at the normal time. It'll be part. It'll no, actually nine something is what time? Ten, eleven, twelve, one. Yeah. So I guess I guess we could do it at eleven o'clock Pacific, two p.m. Uh, Eastern. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right, guys. That's it for this week. See y'all later.